everybody, I'm Nora Burrows. Recently, my friend Mary Ellen asked if I wanted to share a booth with her at an upcoming craft festival. And I used to do quite a few craft festivals and I think they're a ton of fun. The setup is kind of a pain, but once you're there and things are rolling, they're great. And I actually have shared a booth with her at a previous festival a couple years ago and we just had a blast. It was not very lucrative, um, but we had a really good time. What we ultimately decided was that we would have our own booths, but they would be right next to each other. Her stuff is kind of, she has, she has very specific branding. She does snowflake art. She has a YouTube channel. It's called Paper Snowflake Art and a website. So check those out. But she does things like she has um, templates that you can cut out patterns for like a dollar on her website. Um, and then she has jewelry around snowflakes and um, art and gift cards, all kinds of things like that. So her, hers is very specific around snowflakes. And then mine is just kind of like a mod podge of all different kinds of things. So anyway, today what I wanted to do, and not just today, but I, this is going to be a series, is I want to start planning for this craft festival. I have four weeks to get ready and I haven't made anything festival wise in forever because I've been busy making quilts. I've kind of stopped making other types of crafts and I just want to make quilts. That's all I want to do. So what I wanted to do today is to start kind of seeing what I have for this festival because this my festival stuff, my craft items that I've made are kind of stored all over the house. I don't exactly know what I have. I don't know the quantities I have. I don't know what I need to make more of. So the festival's in four weeks. I have four weeks to get ready. I kind of want to just go through the process, get organized with you all, and then for the final episode, we'll be at the festival together. So that'll be fun. And then see for the items that I have, what else I need to do for them. For example, maybe I have the items made, but they're not tagged or maybe I have some items that are partially made but not finished some of these things I've actually made with you all on YouTube my YouTube videos and then some of these things I've made way way before I was even doing these YouTube videos so to start one of those items that I made prior to any of my videos here are these needle felted mushrooms and they're pretty cute they're in these little brass dishes and they're kind of made around these pipe cleaners, so they're bendable. You can kind of bend them any way you want. I was doing needle felting for a while, and I only made two things. I made owls, which I'll show you in a second, and I made the mushrooms. And I have this one single mushroom that's in a thimble. I think that's kind of cute. Um, but all the rest, no, I have two. I have two singles, so I'll price those differently than the doubles. And then I have three of these doubles. This one's obviously like on a cork thing and then this is another one on a dish. So that's an item that I want to make some more of. So I need to think about my goal for that. I think I'm going to try and make two more of the double mushrooms. So that's going to be my goal for that. The other things that I needle felted are pretty darn cute. They're owls. So they're tiny. They're teeny tiny little owls and I have them in all different colors and I think they're pretty adorable. Right now I have 10 owls, I, and I was charging I think like $7 for these. These are kind of time consuming. The thing about crafting and about these craft booths and selling your crafts in general is you never make much money because if you're looking at how much money you put into making these items, you're making like cents on the hour, but you're doing it because you love it. And I loved making these owls. I want to make more. I think I'm going to say four more. I'll make four more of these owls. Out of all of the items in my previous craft booths, the needle felted items really sold pretty much better than anything. So I'd like to make even more than, you know, what I've indicated here, but we'll start with that and keep going. Now, the other thing that I used to sell, which always sold pretty well, were these little baby booties. Are these not like the cutest things you've ever seen? I have four sets left of these. I'll show them to you because they're so cute. So we have this pair, this little like floral pink and yellow pair. This is another floral pair, but it's a little bit more gender neutral, I would say. This is a very handsome pair, and I love that the inside has the polka dots, and then the soles have the polka dots, super cute. And then this last pair has little animals. There's a giraffe on this one. And then an elephant, a purple elephant there. So those are cute. And I think those will sell pretty well. Um, right now I have them priced at $10, which is low. I should probably um, move that up to 12. But I'm not gonna make any more of those. Those are a little bit time consuming and I used to love making those baby booties and I've made a gazillion of those. Uh, but I'm not gonna make any more. I'm kind of over that. I may go back to it someday but that is not bringing me joy making those right now. But they are cute. 
The other thing I used to make that never sold, I mean, I don't know if I even sold one of these, but I think they're pretty cool, are these, they're called taggy blankets, and so they're supposed to be for babies. They have like these ribbons around the outside, and so they can kind of put their fingers in the ribbons and feel them. Some are like satiny, like that one's satiny, and then this one has kind of the ribbing on it, and they're super cute. I don't know, I don't think people just didn't get these. I think I need to relabel them like um, sensory blankets or fidget blankets or something, something like that. But these are cute, and I have one, two, three, four, and I must have sold some because um, I used to have more, so maybe maybe they're stored somewhere else, but I have at least four of those, and because those were not a big seller, I will not make any more of those. Those, those, those were kind of fun. Now, something that I did make a video on, you can go back and check out this video, this is supposed to be Valentine's Day bunting and summer is nowhere near Valentine's Day but I think this is this I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out anyway and I mean you could use this for other things besides Valentine's Day but I have this like super lacy bit on one side and then the other side you know it's patterned heart fabric which I think is nice and some people may want it just to get it for you know Valentine's Day next year and it's bright and colorful um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put that out even though it's not quite seasonally appropriate I think it'll be fine I also have these super cute pot holders and these are made with that heat resistant batting so it's not regular batting it is heat resistant I made one of these for myself and it is still when I'm taking things out of the oven I can't hold on to that um, pan or, or um, cookie sheet for too long it, it I don't know how good quality this heat resistant batting is realistically compared to store bought pot holders, but they're pretty darn cute. And the fact that they're a heart, I think people will like these. I only have three of these. They're kind of a pain to make. I have zero desire to make more of these, but I have three and the three that I have are pretty cute. So hopefully someone will want a pot holder. So this one may look familiar to you. This is a blanket that I made out of um, some really lightweight t-shirts. And it's a pretty small blanket, but it's a great like beach blanket. And I don't need this. It was really fun to make. So I'll just see if somebody else loves this and wants to bring it home maybe for $18. Then I have this blanket that is not a quilt. It's just two pieces of fabric sewn right sides together and then flipped, but it's really adorable. These are little bunnies on the front and then the back is super soft. I don't know what kind of material this is, but it's really soft. It's this stripe. Um, and then I don't know how big this is. So this would be like a throw size. Uh, it's about this wide by that long. So it's a nice size. It's for like, you know, a young person to snuggle up with while they're watching a movie or something like that. Or you could put it on like a twin bed. It's not big enough to be like a twin size full blanket cover, but you could, you know, put this at the foot of the bed or something like that. So hopefully somebody will be interested in that. And then the other blanket I have that's not a quilt is backed in Minky. And if you know Minky, Minky is the softest fabric. I don't know if you can see here how soft this is, but if you were to feel it, it's just luxurious and gorgeous. So I have that Minky on the back and then these hot air balloons on the front. And this really is a baby size blanket. It's square, it's not that big. It's pretty small. The last blanket I have is one that I did make, well I didn't make it on a video, but I did a how to bind your quilt video tutorial and I used this quilt to show you how to how to bind. I think this cute this quilt is adorable. Um, I have gone back and forth about whether to sell this or not because of the fact that I had some tension issues on my sewing machine when I was making it. So there is some, there are some spots that it, it doesn't, it puckers a tiny bit. And I don't know how I feel about selling something like that. So my thought is I will try and sell it and whoever's interested in buying it, I'll make sure that they see those items. I'll price it a little bit less and we'll just see what happens. It might, it might just live with me forever. And I like it enough that I do, Love it, I would be happy with that. So it is these 
trees, but it's like really fun um, fabrics for each one of the trees. Each tree is different. Some of the trees are polka dot. Some of them are, you know, plaid or striped. And then all the fabrics, they're just so fun. Um, let me see if I can find the part that has the puckering and you can decide for yourself how bad it is. I haven't looked at this quilt in a long time, so I actually can't fully remember how bad it is. I mean, I actually can't even really. All right, so yeah, here it's not totally. Let's see if you can see. It's like just not totally lying flat, but it's not, it's not horrible. So for example, you'd think like I would just iron this and it would iron flat, but it, it, it doesn't because there is a little bit of tension problems. So that quilt is actually not as bad as I had remembered it being. I, I don't know if maybe just over time the, um, the threads loosened up a bit and it kind of worked itself out, but um, I just looked at it pretty closely and it's not, it's not looking all that bad. So I will go ahead and bring that with me to the festival and see how that does. Bags. I also have bags. I have, these did not sell well and I think it's because I could never figure out how to display them. I always kind of just had them like in a stack and I think people would walk by and not notice them and couldn't really figure out. I, though I did make about a gazillion of these bags, I've had um, a lot of family members and friends, actually, I think only a couple family members, but Mary Ellen, who I'm sharing the booth with, has, has bought many of these bags. I think she bought herself a couple bags, and then she also bought like all of her out-of-town friends bags for whatever reason, so she has bought uh, many of my bags. So I do, I do have three left, thank you Mary Ellen, um, but these are called market bags, and they are they're kind of made in this origami way. You can definitely find a tutorial online. They're nice and big on the inside, and Mary Ellen actually uses her bag. Every time I see her, she's carrying her market bag, which brings me lots of joy. But the handles are all different and cute, and then the interior is different from the outerior, the exterior. And they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty adorable. Um, so I have this one, which is the blue stripe. And then the kind of peach, peach polka dot inside. And I have this kind of patriotic one with the jean. This is not a jean material, it's like a very lightweight jean material. And then the red and white stripe with the white interior. And this one might be my favorite. It's floral, obviously, with a purple handle. And then the inside is red polka dot. And I think the red polka dot with the floral outside is adorable. Um, these are more of a canvas weight on the outside. It's not the quilting cotton. I have the quilting, quilting cotton on the inside interior, but the outside is canvas. I am not gonna make any more of these bags. You need a ton of fabric to make these bags and you have to lay it all out and fold it. And I actually, if these bags were a big seller, I would just keep making them. I would, I think it's kind of fun, but they don't sell that well and it takes up a lot of material. So you have to find really inexpensive material you have to go hunting for the deals and stuff like that. And I just don't want to do that. So I have three of these bags and I'm thinking maybe for this festival, I will hang them like on the edge of the booth, maybe, you know, like, um, kind of coming down off the sides and maybe that will allow people to kind of see them a little bit better than if they're just kind of stacked in a pile. Another idea I had is I have about a gazillion of these jars and I never know what to do with these jars, but they're so cute and I'm like, eventually I'll have some kind of craft or, or something. Maybe I could put like a needle felted mushroom or a little village or something coming out of the jar, which would be cute, which was why I was initially saving them. Um, but what I think I'm gonna do with them, at least some of them, is I have so many beads. I was making necklaces for a long time and I will include some of the necklaces in the craft booth as well. Um, but those, those never sold very well either. I mean, everybody has jewelry, right? So 
you know, having your jewelry stand out against every other booth that has jewelry is just never gonna be successful. So I have, I have a lot of jewelry, but I also have a ton of beads. So I was thinking, what if I just filled these jars um, with like kind of a mod podge of beads and I could just charge like a buck, a buck per, per jar of bead. And I have so many beads that I'm just, I'm never gonna use them all. So, um, so that would be an idea. And I think they'll look really pretty all lined up with all the different colored beads. It is the next day and I have more stuff to show you, but first I wanted to show you that last night I put some beads in these little jars. I'm gonna keep going, I have five of them done. And I'm thinking that I might even charge two dollars for these because i didn't realize how many beads you could fit in here you can fit quite a few beads so i have a bunch of these little jars i think they're cute i also have jars that are a little bigger than these so i could you know charge one or two dollars per jar and then put, make some bigger jars for for more so right now i have five i think i want to make 20 of the little ones um, but we'll see other things that i've already made are I had made these butterfly wands back in the day and these I made for my very first festival and then I kind of never put out again so I actually cannot remember how well they did they're really beautiful so I can't imagine that people didn't want these wouldn't you want this um, but as you can see it's just a chopstick on the bottom but I put some washi tape around the stick so it's kind of a decorative stick and then it has these lovely ribbons and then of course the butterfly. Speaking of washi tape, I forgot to mention what I wanted to do with these jars is put a, a piece of washi tape, decorative washi tape to, to seal the lid on so that people aren't opening them because let me tell you in putting those beads in there last night, I was constantly spilling beads everywhere. So I don't want people opening them. Um, so I'll put a little washi tape, but anyway, so I have these butterflies and right now I only have two, uh, but I do have the, I do have more actual butterflies that I could make more wands. So let's see the wands. I mean, they wouldn't necessarily be all the same size butterflies. So I don't know if that's something I should care about. But I have two in these pack, and I just got these at the um, at the dollar store, which seems like a great deal. But in all honesty, if I'm spending a dollar and it comes in a pack of two, that's at least fifty cents per butterfly. I think some of them. No, which one was it? I don't know. Some of these were were more than fifty cents each. And if I charge like five bucks for the wand, or even six dollars for the wand. That's still kind of like, you know, a lot of money, a lot of percentage in materials, but I have the materials, so I should make these wands. So I'm going to make more wands. Anyway, so I got these at the dollar store. I have a variety of these little butterflies. So let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five. So I can make at least five more wands, but then I do also have three littler ones so I wonder if I could put these three little ones onto like one wand um, but maybe I should just save this little one so I'm gonna say I'm gonna say for argument's sake that I'm just going to make five more wands I have two so that'll be seven I just found two more little ones those are really cute and they actually match the bigger ones so maybe I can do something with these two I also have quite a lot of these flower clips that I made and I would always sell these for like three dollars um, and they sold really well. I have kind of two sets. I have ones that are more Christmas themed like this one and this one is kind of more Christmas themed. So I'm not going to bring the Christmas ones to the festival but I will, so I have Christmas ones and then I have like summer spring ones and I will definitely bring the summer spring ones. Let's see how many I have. I also, as you can see, put a hole punch here and I have a little uh, stand that I can hang these off of, but I would need to really have enough quantity of these to make it worth putting them on the stand because otherwise the stand's gonna look awfully empty. So I know I do have some of these in progress. Some of these are not done. So let me see how many finished ones I have. And then I have like this set of three which I think I would charge, this says $8 on the back. I think I would charge like $12 for this. I mean, the thing is like, what are people gonna pay, right? Like, I don't know if I'd pay $12 for these 
flowers, but these flowers take time to make, right? Like I have the materials, I have the time, I need the little like clips on the back. Um, I mean, even making like this little like display card takes time. So $8 would mean, how many is that per clip? Let's do some math. It would be like 250, is that right? Two, a little more than 250 per clip. So what would, so, but these clips are a little smaller than the ones I'm charging $3 for. Three, yeah, so maybe $8 makes sense. I don't know, the pricing thing, I, nev I never know what to do. I feel like I'm always either overpricing or underpricing my items. I can never get it right where it should be. But I'm still, I'm still counting the big ones here. Let's, let's see how many more we have. And then I also made little doubles. These are also on the smaller side. And these I was charging $5, which seems about right to me, but they also come in this cute little gift box, which I like that for display purposes. I have 18 of these bigger size clips. And then I also have one set of these smaller clips. And then I have three sets of the triple clips. During the pandemic, when we were not going anywhere and all the stores were closed except the, for the grocery stores, I got into making felted animals. And unfortunately, in my felt stack, I did not have any gray. So I couldn't go to Joann's. I wanted to make the elephants immediately, so I didn't want to wait for, I didn't want to order something and wait, wait for the shipping. So I made my elephants pink. So I have this pink elephant, which I think is pretty adorable and well-made. This is my first attempt at a felt animal and look at it. I mean, it looks like an elephant, but it's kind of funny that it's pink. So because it was pink, I had an idea and I was thinking that for this elephant, I would make it a little um, like garland neck thing of felted flowers. So I made a couple of these felted flowers that I was going to make this garland necklace out of because I thought it would just kind of like add this extra touch but I didn't get very far on making that that garland accessory for the elephant but I can and I think that I will I also think if I don't get to it I can sell the elephant as is but it looks a bit naked don't you think don't you think my elephant looks like it needs to be wearing something like a garland accessory and then I started to make the baby elephant, look how cute this baby elephant is. So this is not done. It does not have its ears. It does not have its eyes. It doesn't have its tail. So I, this is a work in progress, but I thought for the baby elephant, I would make it a tutu out of pink tulle, pink or purple tulle. So it had the mama elephant with the beautiful flower garland and then the baby elephant with the pink tulle skirt would be adorable. So to do, I need to finish this set because I think that would be really good. What else? Let's see what I have in this box here. Um, I have some Christmas things I made, which I will not be bringing to the festival. I have a scrunchie that was like a trial thing. I'm not gonna bring that because I only have one and I'm not gonna make more of that. Um, I have these acorn necklaces, which are kind of cool. I only have a couple left. My husband actually made this for a festival like five or six years ago. We called them magic acorn necklaces. This is a big one, the other ones are smaller. And they sold, I think we charged like $3 per magic acorn necklace. And we had like over a hundred of these. And people loved them. Now, I only have like, four left. I have three small ones and a large one left. I don't really want to make more of these. I'm not going to make more of these. And is it really worth it to bring only four? Mm, no. So I'm not going to bring those. The other thing I made, I have these um, fabric, what do you call these? I mean, they're hangers, but fabric, uh, fabric, whatever hangers. These are hangers that are, that have fabric on them. <laughs> And I was selling them, I think, in a set. Let's look at the tag. It says $4. I must have had like a set of three for $4 or something like that. Um, they're cute. I liked making these. I only have two left. 
I don't know if I would make more. This is a maybe. If I have some extra time, which I won't, I'll make a bunch of these and then I can have, I can put little ribbons around and make and, and make them um, clumps of four. These, these particular fabrics that I chose for these are not my favorite. I think I could make some really, really cute ones, but we'll see how much time I have. That will be a maybe. I also have, these were not a big seller at all. I don't think anybody, I know nobody bought these. Um, but I think they're kind of cool, but I also understand why they're not a big seller. I think people don't get it. These are supposed to be confetti, like for your table, but it's made out of air dry clay. But I like hand painted each one of these stars. Um, and I have a bunch of these little baggies. I thought they would just be so cute, just sprinkled around your table or whatever. It looks like I have five. So I'll bring them, nobody's gonna buy them, but I'll bring them. Um, and then I'll bring them home with me when, when they don't sell. What else? I also have, um, jewelry. So I have, I have, I have a lot of jewelry that I've made and it's just up in, um, these jewelry boxes up in my attic, just stacked. So I picked up the top four. I have no idea what necklaces or bracelets or whatever are in these, but I figured I'd start with four. I think I'm only going to bring four necklaces. So I have two kind of like head mannequin things that I can display the necklaces on. So I figure I'll display two. And if one or two of them sell, I'll have a backup and I can put another one on there. Maybe I'll bring, maybe I'll bring six in hopes that maybe they sell, but they, they don't. They, I don't think I've ever sold a piece of jewelry. But let's look at these top four. Let's see what I got here. So this one is a double strand. Let's see what I was charging for this. This was $24. These are glass beads, uh, double strand. I think these are pretty nice. And then the clasp, let's see if you can see the clasp. Oh, the tag's in the way. The tag's still in the way. Clasp is kind of fancy. It's a fancy clasp. And I think this is this is lovely. I would try it on for you. Well, I will try it on for you. Let's do that. That'll be fun. So that's nice, right? Let's see. So these are glass beads and perfect summer, perfect summer necklace. I'll bring this one. Okay, let's see which one is next. What else did I bring down? Oh, I'm not gonna bring this. I'll go get I'll go upstairs and get another one. So this is supposed to be kind of like you know, I think of like wearing this in Spain or something. These are wooden painted beads and then kind of like bronze beads around the side and then these kind of like off-white beads. I like this, but then it has this like super gold clasp, which makes, which makes no sense, right? Like the gold clasp doesn't go with the bronze. So this one I'm not gonna bring. This one I like, this is a magnet clasp, so it's really, easy on and off. Let's see, I was charging $18 for this. It has this beautiful pearl in the middle and then these glass beads on either side. I'll try it on for fun. Let's see. I know you can't see this very well, but there are glass beads and silver beads in between these pearl beads. I have kind of different hued pearls, so the pearl in the center is a little bit lighter than the pearls along the edge. Um, so that's pretty, and then I really do like the magnet clasp. I think that's kind of a nice touch. Let's see, I brought one more down. I'll have to go get a couple more upstairs. Oh, I love this one. This one is really funky. Um, so it has a little bit of a chain before the clasp. Um, it's just that, that, what do they call this kind of clasp, like a claw clasp, a lobster claw clasp clasp and then these are like glass beads but they're like animal animal glass beads I was charging let's see 22 I started at 28 and then I knocked it down to 22 um, I think this is super funky I like these kind of like longer ones on the side there so those are a couple let me go get a couple more I brought down a couple more necklaces but before I do that I also have some magnets that I'm thinking about that I just saw upstairs. I didn't bring those down. I'll show those to you in, this, in the next episode of this series, but I need to take all of the magnets that I made and put them into little sets, so I need to do that. And then the other thing I think I need to make, which I don't have any of right now, I do have one 
uh, kind of beach baggy kind of thing that I'll show you in a second that's not complete, but I wanna make a bunch of tote bags because we're approaching the end of what I have to show you, like this is pretty much it, and I'm worried that I don't have enough to really fill the booth. So I'm thinking if I make a bunch of tote bags, they'll be easy to make, I can, charge a nice amount for the tote bags and then they'll take up a lot of space in the booth and they'll be nice and colorful and bright. So that's my plan, but let's take a look at these necklaces. Oh, this one's lovely. This one has like these little like, you know, it's, an, it's not a symmetric center, which I don't know if that bothers me. I went through this phase of not wanting everything to be like, like, um, like wedding cake where everything is symmetrical. I wanted it to be like wonky and different, but I kind of wish that this was symmetrical. But that's one. Um, I'll bring that. Uh, this one is probably my favorite thing I've ever made. Uh, has these flower beads in the center. Part of the problem is the flowers are only on one side, so you have to twist them to make sure the flowers are on the outside. Um, but then it has like the smaller flower beads that kind of are three-dimensional, and then the glass pink beads and the pearls along the top, and then this pretty gold clasp. So what are we at in terms of numbers of necklaces so far? We're at four. Let's see what this last one is. This is the last one I brought down. Um, yeah, this, I'm not a big fan of this. I probably won't bring this. I actually like this except for this center, the center stone. I think I might take the center stone out. I like everything else. It's all of these purple glass beads. So let me show you the beach bag that's in process. Here's the bag. Right now it's flipped inside out because the next step that I have to do is put the lining on. But you can see the inside of the bag. I don't know if you can tell, but this line of fabric right here, these are all swimmers which is why I kind of think of it as a beach bag. And then it has kind of like these wave kind of patterns on it. So this, this is gonna be the outside of the bag. And then I'll make the lining, the inside of the bag with a pocket and then like a nice size handle. So that is it. That's all I have to show you so far. I'm going to work on a bunch of the things that I had noted, making more things, tagging things. And then in the next episode, I'll show you what I've done. Hopefully I've made something. Hopefully the next episode will be really long because I will may have made so many things that will take me so long to show you. Hopefully it won't be a really short video of me um, telling you I've only put a couple more beads in, in jars, which is possible. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.